Hello again, this is UML Operator. All right, in this session, we're finally at wireframes. So we're gonna be getting into wireframes. We're gonna start with UI components, which was the same elements and sparks that we use to build out our sitemap and support our requirements elicitation development. And in our last session, we spoke about require, uh, reporting and analytics we built out a couple of dashboards, and then we used document elements to create the reports that we're going to use on an ongoing basis as we're delivering this project. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna be talking about wireframing, starting with UI design. So for our sitemap, we used the user interface toolbar, which came from Extended. And I usually start with these UI components because with the screen component or element here, I get a lot of different tools that I can use to discuss and talk about how we're gonna lay out a particular page or screen on a particular device. So we have a folder sitemap. We have another folder here called Web UI Design. We're gonna add a diagram to it. We're going to extend it and we're going to use user interface diagram type. Just gonna simply put, create that name in here. I'm gonna rename this uh, particular model to UI design session, and we're gonna put it on top, and we're gonna start doing our whiteboard here. Now, when I say whiteboard, I do not mean whiteboard. I mean collaboration. I mean sitting in front of a group of stakeholders that can contribute to what is expected in a particular user interface design, whether that's technical or non-technical stakeholders. So I have a, a clear diagram space here, and I can do one of two things. I can bring in a screen element into this modeling environment and give it a name. And in this particular case, we're gonna call it home but I'm gonna use uppercase, all right? And so we have something here that we can work with, right? The other way, thing that I can do from sitemap is I can bring in a copy of home, drag and drop, and as a link in here. And this is the home link that we used in our sitemap. And I could use reuse that for our UI design, but I don't like to do that. In if you remember in the sitemap design, I used the uh, URI name, lowercase home, and then for the UI design, I'm going to use the uppercase name of the page, in this case, capital H, O-M-E, for home, right? So I don't need this one. I'm just gonna remove it from the screen, or I could leave it into the screen and then draw some sort of reference or relevance to it, whether it's trace or usage or dependency, you can we can choose in what we're telling our story, what's this home page versus this home page. And this is from the namespace sitemap. This is going to be in the namespace UI, web UI design in this namespace or package here. Right? So we're going to use this screen element to do our or start our home page design. Now, typically when you're sitting down with a team and you're doing web layout design, there's some things that we know, and there's, so, there's some elements that we can use. We can use panels, we can use labels, we can use boundaries, we can use other references that are here in this case. But typically what I do when I'm working with a team is I will use panels. So we know what the definition of a panel is in HTML or even canvas design. So we know we can have a header, we know that we can have a footer, and we know, let me do something like this, um, select this up here, make it the same height and width, and then we know that we can have navigation, so I'll bring in another one that represents navigation. Now navigation can be on the left, it can be on the right, and as you know, it can be in the top. And then we have, of course, the body. So in this case, I'm using panels. And the reason I'm using panels, 
I really can't give them a name. If I come in here on this panel one and I type in header, header like that, it doesn't show up anywhere but the properties. So when I'm on it, it's properties. So this would be navigation, this would be body, and this would be footer, right? So I could give them names, but they're not going to show up on the screen, right? And then we would talk from this particular point. And then we may use labels. We, If we have a navigation element, we can use that. But I tend to use labels. So the first label that I bring in here or, or anywhere within the environment, and it's just a lot easier for me off to the side when I'm brainstorming, just to say, hey, this my our naming invention is going to be 0001. So we're going to use three spaces. We know that we're not going to go over 999 elements or components within a page. And I'm just going to call this logo, right? And then if you know, Sparks remembers the last thing that you were on. So I can hit control, hold down the control, left click, it gives me another label. And I can go 002. And then I can put in title. If, if I want a show title, control click, I can go 003, and then nav bar, and on and on, right? And then with these, I can drag and drop these into particular spaces to show potentially what I want to do, either within a widget, a panel, or if there's no panel, just freeform within the space. So I might want to have do something like this with global navigation across, you know, the top or something like that. Now, once I put in navigation, then I can all G, find this panel, don't need it, delete it. And that's just how fast it is because I, ha I have within the header or the head space, I have a logo, title, and then nav bar, right? So this is one way to think about and then lay out your page. And it's totally up to you and your choice of how you want to approach this. So to speed things up, went through, added some other elements or labels in here, took out the panels, did not need them. I have a particular label that I'm using for footer. I don't need header because we understand what header is. We changed some numbering for logo, title went to site name, navigation one, and then responsive web. We're going to have a nav menu or a hamburger uh, as we go to tablet or we go to mobile device size. And then search, we have a search panel, label, widget, site banner, introduction, pipeline. So we laid out just some basic components that we can use within our homepage design and how we want to approach this. We also went in and we added realization. So what we're staying here, uh, stating here in traceability is that this homepage implements the sitemap homepage reference file, right? So we just put that in there as well. So, and if you're working with your graphics department, you can start bringing in graphics and embedding those in the elements. And that's just as simple as coming in, grabbing a particular element, such as we're going to use the site banner here. We're going to go to appearance, select and alter an image. And then working with the graphics team, we came in, we started to build out some images that we want to reuse or use in this. Let me zoom out a little bit here because this is the real size. Bring this down into a size, zoom back in, and then you can very quickly add images. We're going to right click on this, go to appearance, hide the name under the image so that it's nice and clean. And you can do that with other elements to talk about a look and feel. But as you can see under the, uh, like logo, I have the same dialog box as I have for any other element within Sparks. So I can define a logo. I can put links, file links to the graphics department on where the logo is being saved and managed. Do all sorts, all the powerful things that you can do in any element. Um, I get the ability to write requirements or at the label or element level, constraints. Again, I can build scenarios um, and then I can see links and associations. So I get all the power, status, metadata, proposed all the way up to implemented. That comes with the Sparks elements as we're getting into 
UI design and moving forward. And of course, at any particular point, appearance, you can come back up here and then you can, where it says select alternate image, you can just come up here and you can say none and uh, you're all done as you're going forward. Let me complete what I told you I was gonna do. None, and we've set this back to where we, we want to, to have that conversation within our site development. And another example of this, here's a site uh, enterprise e-commerce site uh, where we use panels, where we use UI components, and we use other components to, such as drop-down boxes, other components to help us within our design and working with the graphics department, you can turn this graphic here into this simulation or graphic here with all the power of the elements. I can double click on the elements, get to all the metadata and intelligence that's underneath that, files relevant to the graphics department and things like that when you're working. So very simple, very easy to use user interface within Sparks Enterprise Architect to work on your design, any concept, before you write one line of code. You can lay this out, have a conversation with your graphics department, with your client stakeholders, with your human factors department, dealing with user experience, and all the other outcomes that you want to achieve within your website design and development. All right, as we get into wireframing past UI design, and whether you're working at a graphic element, this is the exact same element that you see here. Well, let's talk at this element. Let's say, for instance, you're eliciting or developing requirements around search. As I'd stated earlier, you get the power of scenario building. So you can bring up the structure editor, as you all know, I like to put it just to the right of the diagram. Let's size this up a little bit like this. And then this is my workspace right here. Let's use pan and zoom just to shrink that down a little bit. So when I select any element in here, I get the power of the structure editor, scenario building. I'm able to very quickly get to uh, diagrams that we may have generated. Let's, let's look at a robustness diagram. Very simple. Let's look at a sequence diagram. Did that video on this previously, so you're able to look at that. So the sequence diagram auto-generated for us based off of context. Uh, we have state in here, so we can auto-generate. I'm going to overwrite the existing state machine diagram as we're going through to support further requirements and design development and all the way up through release. So you get all the power within the UI components here that you may not get using the wireframing uh, toolbox and tooling that we're gonna talk about in our next video. So very much look forward to getting into that session with you. So we covered some uh, ground very quickly. Uh, hopefully the next session helps wrap this up a little bit better for you in understanding the difference between uh, wireframing. We get into, here's the home page under a wireframe versus the home page under a UI component using extended. We'll talk about the differences between those, the various tooling, metadata, properties, tag values, all the things that you get using either one of these design approaches we'll cover in the next session, all right? And until then, happy modeling.